everybody, this is Christine from The Door Doctor, and today we're going to be making a pinwheel flower wreath, and we're going to be doing it in traditional rainbow colors. Um, I just think it's a very happy wreath to make for summer. Um, obviously, though, this is going to take a little bit uh, more in terms of mesh um, to make a single wreath. So, you know, if you wanted to, you could simply make a pinwheel wreath with two or three colors of mesh, uh, however you prefer. Um, I was thinking a pretty ombre pinwheel might be nice with, you know, all shades of blue. If you have a number of different meshes in blue or pink or something like that. Uh, but it's a pretty versatile wreath and we're going to be making this petal for today um, in six different colors. All right, so to start with supplies. So this I'll be making on an eight inch uh, wire wreath frame that I have gotten from the Dollar Tree. Um, you can see that I've already uh, assembled it with a piece of mesh in the center uh, that you're going to be applying your petals to. Uh, this piece of mesh, people have asked me about this. This is uh, simply, you know, I just trace this circle out on uh, a sheet of mesh like this. This is number five plastic mesh. I get this from Hobby Lobby. You can see I've already cut a couple of circles out down the end here. And it comes in sheets of, this is 13 by 22 inches. Um, and number five, meaning there are five little squares per inch. Um, you'll see number seven plastic mesh oftentimes, which just means they have smaller little holes so that there's seven holes per inch. Um, but I simply trace a circle, apply it to the middle of my wreath frame with zip ties so I can apply some uh, flower petals to that. Uh, we're going to need six colors of poly burlap mesh. You don't have to use poly burlap just because I am. Um, the colors I've sort of lined up here uh, for you. I'm just doing a basic red, orange, yellow, green, sort of a royal blue and purple. Um, we're going to be applying all the petals with my favorite eight inch zip ties. And then for the flower center, we're going to be uh, doing a looped yellow center. And um, I'm going to be using this faux jute tubing. I got this from craftoutlet.com. It usually comes in packages like this that have three long pieces, so you can make three flower centers. I'm actually not sure of the length um, of each of these strands, but we'll be using one strand um, and applying it to a smaller piece of number five plastic mesh. Uh, in little loops, we'll be using yellow color-coordinated pipe cleaners to attach those loops. And then to finish our wreath off, we'll be using just a pre-cut red felt circle um, along with a red pipe cleaner as a hanger. All right, so I'm going to take a quick break, clean some of this off, and then we'll start cutting our mesh and assembling our petals. Hi there, welcome back. So we're going to start cutting some mesh and um, making our pinwheel leaves. Uh, what I forgot to say in the beginning was that for a typical roll of poly burlap mesh like this, this is 10 inch wide poly burlap mesh. Uh, they come in 10 yard rolls. Each roll, when you cut it into 10 by 10 inch squares, which is what we're going to do next, uh, that will give you about 35 squares per roll. And the first time I made this particular wreath, I used um, approximately one full roll uh, for the whole wreath. Uh, now, obviously, you're using six different colors, so you're only gonna be using about one sixth of each roll of poly burlap mesh. Um, so it, it doesn't take up a huge amount of poly, uh, but obviously if you're using more colors, you're gonna to have to purchase more mesh. Um, for each of these petals, one square is going to yield two pinwheel petals. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. In terms of cutting my mesh, I always use my wood burner here to melt the edges. Um, this one I purchased on Michael's and I use this little slanted chisel tip. Um, and I'm just gonna cut a few of these 10 by 10 inch squares. Um, you may not be able to see this very well, but I cut this on my glass dining room table off to the side here. So you're gonna need to use something that's very sturdy because of how hot this wood burner gets. And I'm just gonna be cutting down along the little squares that you see on the mesh. I'm just gonna find 
a nice straight line and stay within those little squares. So I measure out 10 inches and then the wood burner just makes a nice smooth melted line like that. It gives a little bit of strength because it melts those edges nicely. One thing I would suggest when you're melting mesh is <laughs> try, and I learned this the hard way, you should always try to cut your lighter colors of mesh first and then proceed to the brighter colors uh, because each time you melt, you're gonna get a little line. You can probably see it on my table here. You're gonna get a little piece of residue from the mesh that you just cut. So if you do white after doing bright Kelly green like I just did, you're gonna get little pieces of green all stuck in your white mesh. Um, the other thing you could do is just simply clean your table off in between each mesh, uh, but sometimes I'm a little forgetful and I don't get to do that. Um, all right, so that was just a sidebar. So to make these pinwheel petals, I've already made a whole bunch of them, but we're gonna do the blue ones together. So I have my pre-cut poly burlap mesh. Get that out of the way. We're gonna take one square and we're simply going to make it into or fold it into a triangle. And I like to have the point, one point down towards my midsection, another point facing away from me. And I'm gonna take this point that's closest to me and bring it up to meet the other point. And just make a nice even triangle, make sure your edges are um, nice and even on each side. And then we're going to gather this um, from the base of the triangle where you folded it, right in the middle, and we're gonna gather up to the point. Just like that. I sort of think it looks a little bit like a, I don't know, a little whale tail or a mermaid tail. And then you're going to use two zip ties to attach this or to close this. You're going to put one slightly to the left of where you're pinching, all right? And then another one slightly to the right of where you were pinching. So it looks like that. I think that reminds me of sort of a <laughs> handlebar mustache, I think, minus these two little <laughs> funny zip ties sticking out. And you're gonna cut your zip ties off. And then I have this nice uh, cutting tool from Amazon that I'm going to just cut in the middle of the two zip ties. And that way you have two, two pretty equal looking pinwheel petals, okay? So we'll do a couple more. So take your square, make a nice triangle, flatten that out, gather it from the base to the point, and then two zip ties one slightly off center from where you're pinching it to the left of center, and then another zip tie to the right of center. All right. And then we'll just trim that in the middle. All right. And I think in total, I was saying this before, I made about 70, 70 of these individual petals uh, for this size wreath frame. Let's do a couple more. And number two. And you probably space the zip tie about an inch from each other. It gives you enough space to trim in the middle. You certainly don't want to have your zip tie too close to the cut edge because you don't want this to fall off the zip tie when you're attaching it to your wreath. All right, do a couple more. And then we should have everything all set. Oops, one. All 
one and the last one. I think for each color, I cut six squares. So six red, six orange, six yellow, etc., and cut them into 12 petals. Um, so I had a little extra. Um, the first time I did this, I didn't complete a full rainbow in the center. You know, I went red, red, orange, yellow, didn't have room for green, blue, purple. <laughs> but I think if you did, you know, six colors perfectly, you'd need 72 squares. All right. All right, so there you go. Little pinwheel petal leaves. So I'm going to take a quick break, pull out my wreath frame, clean off this table, and then we'll start to assemble our wreath. There's gonna be a lot of mesh on the table in a minute. So I'll be right back. All right, so welcome back. We're ready to assemble the petals. And I'm gonna first apologize for my very hoarse voice. I have the worst springtime allergies and the tree pollen here in New England is just ravaging <laughs> everybody in my house. And so we've all been very sneezy um, and stuffy. And so I'm going to try to get through this without coughing too much. All right, so back to the wreath. So we have our wreath center and we have all of our assembled petals and all the different colors. And so we're going to be um, applying these around this, I'd say, number two wire. So not the outermost wire, not the innermost wire that the mesh is attached to, but this middle one. So that'll be row one. And there's going to be three rows in total uh, that move progressively inward. So the first row out here, you're going to be working in a clockwise fashion, starting with your red or whichever colors you chose, working clockwise this way. Um, you should be able to get, I believe I was able to get 30 petals or five full rainbows on this first row. Uh, really depends on how tightly you place them. Um, so I'm gonna simply put one of my zip ties in there, take my pinwheel, my red. You're going to want to place this so that the uh, finished seam is facing up rather than this raw seam, okay, or raw edge. All right, I'm gonna put that right against the crossbar there and just work our way around the orange. And you're gonna overlap each color slightly over the one preceding it. Take yellow. Rainbows always remind me of Crayola crayons, like a fresh box of Crayola crayons, these primary colors. And how excited I'd be in school when I had a brand new box of crayons. It just make me happy. All right, so I'm gonna do green. Just sort of lay that over. So much mesh, it's covering my screen here. Do a couple more and then I'll pause. Show you where I'm, how it looks. So we go blue. It's pretty simple. I mean, once you decide on your color combinations, assembling all the different petals takes a little time, but putting them on the wreath is pretty simple. those try to really pack these in and so as you can see we'll bring this closer there's my first six all those zip ties are in the way cut those off oh my god that's a little bit better um, you can see how they're overlapping one another how the finished seam is facing up and in the back of it, you can see how close I really kind of push them all against each other. Um, I'll probably get one more rainbow in here 
Um, if I'm smart about it, I should be able to get, I think I had said five sets of rainbows. Um, hopefully I can get six uh, in the back here, which would be 30 petals. Um, so I'm gonna keep working around and see how many I can squeeze in here. I have not done this on a larger wreath frame. Um, I have 12 inch wreath frames, which obviously would need more petals, um, more mesh probably, but I think would be really pretty. This finished wreath, um, you know, when all is said and done, gives you about eh, 22, 21, 22 inch diameter flower. Again, it depends on how large you make your petals and how you place them on the frame, but. Let's see if I can get this full rainbow into this section of the wire frame. Starts moving fast once you get the, once you get into a rhythm, right? All right. And then this last purple petal is gonna be tough to put in here. I think I can do it. All right. So, so each of these eight inch frames have, you know, three sections because you have these crossbars that separate into three sections and I've managed to put 12 petals or two complete rainbows in one section. Um, so I'm gonna continue on working my way around, hopefully with another, you know, four sets of rainbow uh, petals, and then we'll come back together and do row two. All right, so moving on to row two, uh, we finished row one and yes, I was able to get, wow, I was able to get six full rainbows in here. I think that looks really nice. We'll bring it a little closer. You can see they're really tightly attached um, to that row there. Not a lot of space in between each petal. Um, but I wanted a complete rainbow, and so you had to really squeeze them in there to get six full ones. All right, so we're gonna do three rows of petals total, so we're on row number two. And this will be a little bit of a guesstimation as to where to start uh, row number two. Usually I would move in about an inch um, from where this row was zip tied. And so roughly, I think I'll place, I'm gonna start with my red color again. Um, and I think I'm gonna place it just slightly inside the mesh here. And I'll show this to you in a second. All right, let me flip it over here. So I'm gonna place the zip tie right there. It's probably the first set of squares inside of this black um, piece of wire. And we're just gonna rim the edge of the mesh with our different petals and see how many rainbows, full rainbows we can squeeze in there. All right. And again, we're gonna work clockwise. I'm going to pretty much have each petal bump up against the one next to it. So very little space in between, if any. And hopefully that'll allow us to get about four 
full rainbows in. Large rainbow mesh mountain next to me here. And there, just make sure again, your seamed edge is facing upward. And I'm gonna place these really close. Really with no space in between on the mesh. I'll show you that in a second. I want them to be just as close as that first row. They're so close together, I realize all the zip ties um, sort of obscure things. So let me just trim these and bring this closer. So row two, you can see I've done these, the first six here, they're pretty tightly, tightly spaced or closely spaced. You can see there's virtually no um, space within the mesh in between each petal. And so we're just going to continue on all the way around here. And so I think I'll do that on my own so as not to bore you silly. And then we'll come back and do row number three together. All right, so second row is complete. And I was able to squeeze all four um, rainbows in there. So 24 petals in total. I'll show you how close those are all. They're pretty tight. And now we're going to do the final row, row three. It's also going to be placed very close to the second row. And I've already placed my starting zip tie right there. And my hope is that I'm going to get 18 petals or three full rainbows in with this row. Um, so fingers crossed. We're gonna similarly place them really right up against each other as we go around. Okay, so we got number one in there. And usually I only, I think I'm only gonna use maybe two or three little mesh squares per petal, keep them pretty tight. And I think in total, if I do my math properly, at the end of all of this, don't quote me yet, but I think we'll end up using 78 petals in total. Fuzzy math, revised math. There we go. So I'm really gonna squeeze these in. Sorry if my hair is in the way. <laughs> so I stick my face all the way into the camera angle. Just wanna make sure that they're evenly spaced. This is a little tricky. This part I like to stand for, but Obviously, it's hard to stand over your wreath the whole time. Start to, everything starts to ache in addition to my fingers. Let's see. But this point is pretty critical to make sure everything is spaced properly. Right. All 
right, so one rainbow done. Let's get that out of the way. Just gonna take a step back and make sure. Yeah, I think I have enough space or the right spacing to be able to get two more full sets. So let's see. It's not completely out of the norm for me to take an entire row apart once I've already put it on the wreath. I don't like the way it's placed, um, but I'm going to try not to do that today because <laughs> these <laughs> that would mean a lot of petals would have to come off and a lot of zip ties would have to get cut. And I don't know about you, but I hate it when my mesh looks like I've been torturing it. So I'm going to try to make this right the first time. it over so I can place these, space them properly, but also space them so that they're pretty close and regular. Oh, that makes me happy. Looks nice. And there we go with purple. All right, let's cut some of these. another pause just to see where we're at so I think it's easier to flip it over there so you can see I'm almost done I think I'll have just enough room for those last six petals and then we'll be done well not done but done with this portion The end of a marathon, a mesh marathon. Okay. And then this is such a brightly colored wreath. Um, I will show you at the end, but I spray all of my poly burlap wreaths with some sort of a sealant, some sort of a protectant, protectant, is that even a word? Um, a sealant, usually I use a Rust-Oleum clear uh, spray on all my wreaths, and I would suggest it for something like this. You want these bright colors to really, you know, stay as long as possible, and spraying it will just, you know, I use a matte, they have a gloss spray, but I use the matte spray, and it just will keep the colors from fading uh, as fast, you know. All right, this is getting really tight. Oh, I need to get three more in here. It's gonna be tricky. Can I do it? Maybe. I know what I need to do. Cut these out of the way. Oh, 
All right. Hmm. Pretty close. I think I can work this out. Let's see. I think I was too generous in my spacing over on this side, but I'll manage. Let's see. Blue. I don't know, what do you think? I see a little space in there. Might require a little rejigging, but I think the point is you can be done. Where there's a will, there's a way. squeeze all right those last couple and I'm gonna tuck the purple one under this is really squeezing the red all right look at that okay so I'm pretty happy that I was able to do that so three rows of petals the back row has six sets of six rainbows or six sets of rainbows, so 36 petals. The second row has four rainbows or 24 petals, and this one has three rainbows or 18 petals. So I'm going to take a quick break because my hands hurt, and then we'll come back. We'll do the wreath center. Uh, I'll show you that matte sealant spray, and we'll be just about done. Right, so now we're going to do the wreath center and this is going to be a round center made of loops of this yellow jute tubing and I measured this strand out it's about 12 yards of um, tubing uh, per length and there's three per package so I use one full length of this for the wreath center and I usually attach loops of that jute tubing to a square piece of mesh like this. And this is just a piece of scrap that I had um, lying around. It's about four inches by four inches. Um, you know, I, I will cut the overage at the end. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly this size, but usually um, this is how, you know, my hands work best. Um, and then we're gonna attach all those little loops with pipe cleaners. And so I have uh, one for attaching the center to the wreath and then four uh, for the actual loops. Um, and I'm gonna take these four and just cut them in half. Um, so you have eight pieces, eight shorter pieces, uh, because we're going to be attaching eight clusters of yellow loops to this piece of mesh. And we're going to be doing it um, in a circular pattern. So I'm gonna have one cluster in the middle to start with and then we're just going to place the other seven um, spaced out around that center cluster, okay? Um, so I'm gonna start just by sticking my first pipe cleaner in there. I just bend it in the back side. Um, you're gonna be placing your loops on top and then snaking the pipe cleaner back in and under like that, and then twisting it along the back here. All right, but for now, place that down. I can get my tubing out here. It's gonna be hard for me to sit and do this and lean over, but we're gonna do, I'm gonna do my best. So we'll take a length of this tubing. I usually like to grip it in my right hand and then with the tail of it towards my palm. And then I'm just gonna make six loops around my hand uh, you don't need to use your hand to measure this. You could use just about anything you want, I suppose, but it's just easier for me to loop this around my hand. Sometimes it gets twisted out, so you have to be careful that it doesn't get all twisted up. Try to make those six loops, more or less even, and then I'm gonna pinch it under here, slide it off my hand, pinch it on the other side, and grab it all in the middle. I'll try to show you that. So 
So it just looks like a little bow tie almost with six loops and six loops. And then you're just gonna plunk this onto your mesh. This is kind of the tricky part. It's gonna be hard to show. Don't wanna let go of any of those loops. And you're gonna take this top pipe cleaner and thread it back down through your mesh, ideally in the next square over from the first one. You can see that. Make sure it's sort of in the middle there. Make sure your loose strand is secured and kind of tucked away and hidden. You're not seeing this guy. Um, let me see. And then you're just gonna pull this as tight as you can. Hold tight. Twist your pipe cleaners two or three times in the back. And that's cluster number one, okay? And then how you place the other seven is really up to you, but I usually work, I go out to the corner here. I'll stick the first pipe cleaner there, bend it a little bit. Let's see if you can see that. It's a couple holes away from the middle one. And then again, it puts that down. Make my loops around my hand. Six loops. Pinch it, slide it off your hand, pinch it with your other hand, place that right on your mesh. I'll try to show you this closer, but I'll show it to you from the, the top view once I get it on here, right? So it's going to be like that. This is the second set. Second set, and then Again, pull your zip ties tight, twist them along the back two or three times. I'll cut the extra pipe cleaner out of the way, so hopefully you can see that a little bit better. So there's your first two. All right, then I think I'll put number three. So if these are the first two, I'll place number three right here. I to keep this in the frame. I usually do this on my lap, sitting in front of the TV. I'll make a whole bunch of these. So it's hard having this up on a, a countertop like this. I apologize. All right. So pinch in the back, slide it off your hand. Pinch both sides together. Find your zip tie, or not your zip tie. <laughs> Find your pipe cleaner, usually my zip tie. This time, find your pipe cleaner. Try to snake this pipe cleaner up and over your loops, down through the mesh. That's the top, that's the back. Make sure all your loops are nice and even. Tighten this. And then cut the extra. We got three. And the spacing, I like to keep them, I don't know, they're about, you know, an inch or so apart. I mean, the closer together, um, the tighter the flower center. It's really up to you. Let's see. It's very forgiving. It doesn't have to be perfectly even. It doesn't have to be... Um, spaced in any particular way. All right, number four. my pipe cleaner. Got lost among all the loops here. All right. And the 
before tightening, and I usually like to make sure, and I haven't been doing this on camera here, is make sure all my loops are even, that there's not one side that's longer than the other, that they're kind of placed in the middle. Make sure that the zip, the zip tie, the pipe cleaner is tightened so that they don't slide around once you have them on the mesh. I really do like my zip ties, you can tell. All right, so that's four. Let's see, I'm gonna do number five about here, I think. And so this was our center, this was our middle one right here. And I did one, two, three, four, Four, I'll do five, six, seven, right around that way. Three, it's starting to get all twisted on itself. I like this material though because it's, um, I don't know how to describe it. Some of the glitter or metallic meshes are a little stiffer, a little harder to wrap around my hands. And this, um, the jute tubing is a little bit easier for me to work with. It has a nice matte finish too. I, I don't use a lot of the metallics. And I should say I bought this pack. Um, this was from Craft Outlet, but you can find these at a whole bunch of different online craft stores, like the Wreath Shop or Mel's Crafty Mojo. I like. I've purchased from other um, sellers on Etsy, and and found some pretty colors that I couldn't find in you know, some of the wreath stores online or craft stores online. All right, let's see. And certainly for this rainbow wreath, you could use anything, uh, any of the colors that you used in the rainbow for a flower center. Certainly doesn't have to be yellow. Let's see, whatever you have. Getting all twisted up. Let's see. Take a second to unravel here. Let's see. Five and six loops, slide that off, pinch it, find your pipe cleaner. <laughs> the problem with using color coordinated pipe cleaners is then you lose them and <laughs> you can't find it. Make sure everything's nice and tight, even, and pull your pipe cleaner tight on the back and twist it. And we have, let's see, two more. Two more, and then I'll show you the configuration I ended up with at the end here. I do these a little different every time, so. Like I said, it's circle, circle-like, <laughs> circular. Now this will go a little easier because we're running out of running out of tubing, so it's not falling on the floor. Alright. Sure I don't 
that on crooked. Make it all this way and then put the last couple on crooked. Let's see. All right. Twist that. And number eight. Almost done. So I think number eight, I'm going to fill in this space here. I mean, you might have enough for an extra loop. I don't know. We'll see. Sometimes I do seven. Sometimes, oh, look at that. Barely going to get six. I'll do it, though. I think I can. Just like with the petals, I think I can manage to sneak this in. So that last little piece has to go in the back underneath your pipe cleaner so it doesn't come loose, unravel on you. This guy in there. See if I've managed that okay. Yep. Think so. All right. Let me just finish this. I'll pause. I'll show you what it looks like from the back and the front. All right, so all eight sets of loops. I'll straighten these so you can see. This is your back with all of those different little clusters attached, kind of like a circle. And then from the front, it looks a little crazy, you know, because it hasn't been placed on your flower yet. But you have all these nice little clusters and you have one in the center there and you're gonna put, um, usually I like to stick my fifth pipe cleaner uh, right in the middle, right over that starting set of um, loops. And then I push all these little ends of the pipe cleaners down flat, okay, like that. And then I'm going to grab all of this in a cluster and then I just trim extra mesh in an approximate Circle, so you don't see much of that when you're done. All right, get rid of that. So that's the back. This is your front. So let's grab our wreath, and then we can add this. And we're pretty much done. All right, let's flip that around. Twist that guy. Stick your loose ends here. And I like to, I like to kind of sit there and play it play around a little bit with these loops and make sure that they, I don't want them looking too perfect, but I do want it to look, um, you know, more circular than kind of squarish, you know. Sometimes the, these clusters can look a little, depending on how I place them, can look a little bit too square. All right, and I like that. And then at the end, usually I apply a little red loop in the back hanging. I think I'll do that now. Let's see. I'll flip this guy over. Let's just stick it here. I don't think it really matters. There's no top or bottom on a rainbow wreath like this. So we'll just wrap this guy around the back here. I know I'm doing that a little quickly, but there you go. I usually like to wrap the loose ends of this loop, hanging loop around the um, wire of my actual wreath frame. It looks like that. And then we're gonna add our pre-cut felt circle. Uh, I use a little hole punch to make these little teeny tiny holes around the periphery there. And then I just attach this to the wire wreath frame with the zip ties all the way around. And 
And you don't want too many zip ties back here because it's meant to protect your door. And if you add too many zip ties, they just end up scratching your door, but with the zip ties, so. But you can usually tuck in the ends, make it look neat. They do have red zip ties. I ran out of them. I love having the red ones because then you don't, um, you know, they just kind of disappear into the felt backing of the wreath. It's nice to have the back of the wreath look nice. I mean, I, I forget that sometimes people have clear, you know, they have windows uh, or glass rather in their doors. And so, you know, it's great to have the front of the wreath look nice, um, but the back should also look neat because you could be staring at it from the inside of your house. So I always try to keep that in mind and at least make the, um, the back of the wreath look as presentable as the front. All right, so we're just going around tightening all of these. Snip that off. And then we'll just tuck, tuck those little tips of the zip ties in and we should be good to go. So that's how the back looks. And there's your front. And then I, I promised I would show you the matte sealant I use. This is the Rust-Oleum sealant. I give this a spray, cover your wreath center when you do that, or spray it before you put the wreath center on. Uh, but there she is. This, this measures, let's see, about 21 inches as promised. Really cute for the summer. Well, so thanks for joining me. I'll be back again soon.